In the first lesson to this section of our STEM instructional program, we introduced you to the four forces that impact the flight of an aircraft. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the concept of thrust as it applies to aircraft. We are going to discuss how thrust is generated in an airplane and how it affects the other three forces, lift, drag, and weight. Thrust is the aerodynamic force acting in the direction of the motion of the aircraft. In other words, thrust is the force that attempts to move an aircraft through the air. Thrust is generated by the engines of the aircraft. For an aircraft to leave the ground or to stay in the air, the thrust force must be large enough to move the aircraft through the fluid medium with sufficient speed for the wings to generate a lifting force at least equal to the force of weight of the airplane. In other words, the lifting force is directly related to thrust. Because thrust is a force, it can be represented as a vector quantity having both a magnitude and a direction. When we look at a vector representation of thrust, we would see that it acts in a direction that is the same as the motion of the object. We define a force in simple terms as a push or a pull. In an aircraft, we will be dealing with both as a propeller pulls an aircraft through the air, while a jet engine pushes the aircraft. In this lesson, we will focus on the basic concepts of what thrust is and, in general terms, how thrust is generated. We will be looking at two mechanisms used to generate thrust, propellers and jets or turbines. Most general aviation or private airplanes are powered by internal combustion engines which turn propellers to generate thrust. Still other corporate or commercial aircraft and some military aircraft use propellers driven by turbines. The specific details of how a propeller generates thrust are often complex, but we can address some of the basic concepts and still learn a few of the fundamentals in this lesson. In general terms, a propeller is a type of fan that transmits power by converting rotational motion into thrust. An action-reaction system is developed where the propeller pushes the fluid, in this case air, toward the rear of the aircraft, causing the aircraft to move forward. This action is similar to those used by aircraft wings to develop lift and can be modeled by either concepts developed by Daniel Bernoulli or Isaac Newton. Those that support Bernoulli's ideas about fluid motion theorized that an airfoil moving through the air would create an area of low pressure over the top or longer edge of the wing and an area of higher pressure under or on the shorter edge of the wing. This difference in pressure would result in an unbalanced force acting toward the top of the wing or lift. Others who support Newton's action-reaction concepts attempted to explain this same motion by showing that if the molecules passing over the top of the wing were forced to change direction in a downward pathway, the molecules themselves would exert a force on the wing causing the wing to move upward. Since the curve on the bottom edge of the wing is less than that on the top, the force pushing the wing upward would exceed the force pulling the wing downward. Both theories would explain the formation of lift over an airfoil. A propeller is basically a set of wings that rotate around a central hub. As such, they generate lift much the same way as the main wings of the aircraft. Because of its position, the propeller produces lift but in a forward direction, a force we refer to as thrust. Its rotary motion through the air gives the propeller in the aircraft forward motion. Also like a wing, the propeller moving through the air produces drag. As the propeller is rotating, the drag force does not act in a straight line, but causes the aircraft to try to rotate. This force is typically referred to as torque. By placing the propeller blades at an angle of attack to the wind, the thrust force can be maximized. This angle of attack is impacted by such air conditions as altitude, pressure, 
density, humidity, and temperature. Some aircraft are equipped with variable pitch propellers to take advantage of these changes. By placing the blade at an angle to the oncoming wing, we also increase the frontal area of the wing or the amount of air that must be pushed aside to allow the blade to pass. This increases the amount of drag or resistance to motion. To design a propeller blade, we must consider the sum of these two forces, thrust and torque, which results in a single force called the normal force. The blade must be strong enough to hold up under this force. We also need to consider that the speed of the propeller blade is not constant throughout its length. The tip of the propeller blade is traveling not only farther, but faster than the part near the propeller hub. To keep thrust equal along the blade, the propeller is built with a twist and different thicknesses. The design is such that the blade is thick at the hub to support the additional stress with a large angle of attack and thin at the tip with a low angle of attack. According to Newton's third law of motion, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. For the aircraft to move forward through the air, the air must be accelerated backwards. While the propeller is designed to propel the aircraft forward through the air, the torque force also must be considered. As the propeller spins in one direction, the resulting torque force causes the aircraft to rotate in the opposite direction. This rotation must be counteracted by either aircraft design for constant speed flight or by control adjustments for periods of acceleration or deceleration. To summarize this concept, a propeller produces forward motion in an aircraft by doing work on a mass of air at a specific velocity. While the mass of air being pushed by the propeller does not change, it pushes toward the rear of the aircraft at an increased velocity. This increase in velocity means that the air has been accelerated. The product of the mass of the air and the acceleration is a force pushing the air backwards. The force equal and opposite to this force is the thrust force and results in the forward motion of the aircraft. Piston engines and propellers are limited by the altitude that they are able to gain and the speeds that they can attain. To fly faster or higher than propeller driven aircraft allow, a different form of propulsion is necessary. This led to the development of the jet engine. Most aircraft today use jet propulsion systems. These include a majority of commercial aircraft, many corporate aircraft, and most, but not all, military aircraft. A jet engine is a reaction engine discharging a fast-moving jet that generates thrust by jet propulsion. In other words, a jet produces thrust by propelling backwards a mass of material at high velocity. This broad definition includes air-breathing jet engines such as turbojets, turbofans, ramjets, and pulse jets, as well as non-air-breathing jet engines such as solid fuel or liquid fuel rocket engines. In general, all jet engines are combustion engines. While rockets will be covered in a future lesson, we will concentrate on air-breathing jets in this program. The term jet engine loosely refers to an internal combustion air-breathing jet engine. These typically feature a rotating air compressor powered by a turbine with leftover power providing thrust through a propelling nozzle. Jet aircraft use such engines for long distance travel. These engines offer high speed and greater fuel efficiency at higher altitudes than piston and propeller engines over longer distances. To start our look at jet thrust, we will use a black box description which only looks at what goes into the engine, air and fuel, and what comes out, exhaust gas and an unbalanced force that pushes the aircraft forward. This force, called thrust, is the sum of the momentum differences between entry and exit and any unbalanced pressure forces 
between entry and exit streams. In order to understand how a jet engine creates thrust, we will have to look at its operation much as we did for the propeller. In basic terms, there are two sections to a jet engine, commonly referred to as the cold section and the hot section. Each of these operational sections has parts that complete specific functions. For subsonic aircraft, air is brought into the engine through an intake or inlet. The inlet is an opening at the front of the engine which is designed to ensure smooth airflow into the engine despite air sometimes approaching the inlet from directions other than straight ahead. The inlet length is minimized to reduce drag and weight. As jets fly at altitudes where there is limited oxygen for combustion, jet engines have the ability to compress air and increase its pressure. This increases the mass flow rate through the engine, enabling it to produce thrust at higher altitudes. This is achieved by a compressor, which is located behind the inlet. The compressor is made up of rows of blades shaped like wings. In modern aircraft, there are two or three compressor stages that run at different speeds, giving the air different levels of pressure. Each stage consists of rotating blades and stationary stators or vanes. As the air moves through the compressor, its pressure and temperature increase. A combustor is the component or area of a jet engine where combustion takes place. It is also known as a burner, combustion chamber, or flame holder. In a gas turbine engine, the combustion chamber is fed high pressure air by the compression system. Fuel is mixed with the compressed air and ignited, which causes the fuel air mixture to heat and expand. Fuel is burned continuously after initially being ignited during engine start. The objective of the combustor in a gas turbine is to add energy to the system to power the turbines and produce a high velocity gas through the exhaust nozzles. Immediately behind the combustion chamber is the turbine. The turbine is a series of bladed discs located behind the combustor in the pathway of the exhaust gases that acts like a windmill. The turbine extracts energy from the hot gases leaving the combustor which forces the turbine wheels to spin. The turbine is connected by a shaft to the compressor. Some of the energy collected by the turbine is transmitted through the shaft to drive the compressor. Turbine exhaust gases pass through the propelling nozzle or exhaust to produce a high velocity jet. Energy available in the gas turbine exhaust is converted into a high speed propelling jet by the nozzle. Propelling nozzles accelerate the available gas to subsonic, transonic, or supersonic velocities depending on the power setting of the engine, their internal shape, and the pressures at the entry to and exit from the nozzle. To increase the thrust produced by a jet engine, the exhaust gases must undergo an increase in velocity, an increase in mass, or both. Unlike a propeller, the mass of the gas exiting the jet is the sum of the masses of the molecules of air and the mass of the molecules of the fuel consumed in combustion. Propelling nozzles may have a fixed opening or they may have openings that may be widened or narrowed to speed up or slow down the velocity of the exhaust gas which would increase or decrease the thrust generated by the engine. Another method of increasing thrust generated by a jet engine is the use of an afterburner. Primarily used in military aircraft, the afterburner produces extra thrust by burning fuel in the exhaust area behind the turbine. This reheating of the turbine exhaust gas raises the propelling nozzle entry temperature and also the exhaust gas velocity. The nozzle area must be increased to, to accommodate the higher volume of the exhaust gas and characteristic extended flame in the exhaust area. The thrust 
generated by the propeller or jet engine provides acceleration and forward motion. If more thrust is generated, it increases the speed of the aircraft through the air and also increases the drag on the airframe and the lift generated by the wings. As the engine operates, it uses fuel which reduces the mass of the aircraft which impacts the weight that must be overcome by the wings. The four forces that affect the flight of an aircraft are interrelated and must be considered when designing or flying an aircraft.